good afternoon good afternoon good afternoon good afternoon good afternoon so today we are going to discuss about the coal mines regulations 1957 you know that uh, the coal mines regulation is applicable to all the coal mines operated in india all the coal mines are governed by the regulation of 1957 which is called your coal mines regulation so the coal mines regulation 1957 was laid down uh, and various precautions and standards were framed from the stand point of workplace environment in the mines so Uh, the working environment in underground coal mines or surface mines are uh, governed by the coal mines regulation uh, let us discuss some of the salient features of the provisions uh, which are outlined in the coal mines regulation 1957 of course this coal mines regulation 1957 is uh, further amended in the year 2017 coal mines regulation which is known as coal mines regulation 19 2017 so as per the regulation 9 of the coal mines regulation notice of accident in the mines sometimes various types of accidents take place so uh, in the regulation number 9 of coal mines regulation 19 a provision is there on notice of accidents suppose some accident has taken place in your mines what is to be done when there occurs or there occurs in or about a mine suppose an accident has taken place in near mine an accident has caused loss of life somebody has died in the mines or serious bodily injury has taken place in connection with mining operations then what is to be done uh, in the mines sometimes accidents do take place and sometimes some people also lose their life or sometimes they uh, 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 are injured serious bodily injury take place Uh, while they carry out the mining operations sometimes also an explosion takes place in the mines because in the coal mines uh, methane gas is there so whenever the methane gas comes in contact with the oxygen so methane explosion takes place or some ignition takes place fire place in the mines so that is an accident in the mine sometimes the coal also catches fire which is known as spontaneous combustion of coal a spontaneous heating or outbreak of fire takes place because of spontaneous heating of coal or there is an appearance of smoke because of the fire in the coal seam sometimes the smoke comes out from the strata or there is some indication of heating temperature rises whenever the coal is heated or sometimes there may be outbreak of fire so these are all different type of accidents which take place in underground coal mines uh, and uh, sometimes uh, uh, some uh, noxious gases also uh, come out from the mining strata from the coal mines after the blasting nitrous fumes are generated after the blasting carbon dioxide is generated and there may be some uh, h2s gas or sulfide gas so an influx of noxious gases carbon monoxide also sometimes comes out from the mining environment which can cause the accident and some people may die because of the noxious gases sometimes an occurrence of inflammable gas in the mine to which regulation 155 does not apply sometimes the inflammable gas 
methane gas is an inflammable gas which uh, is present in the coal mining environment and that can cause the accident and uh, you know that in mining uh, the uh, coal seam at a greater depth the strata also contains water so there may be eruption of water from the water pockets from the strata or sometimes the water from other area also get into the mine and the mine is flooded which is known as inundation problem in the mines that may also cause fire eruption of water in the mines and there may be an instantaneous failure of the pillar failure in, in the coal mines the coal pillars burst out and pillar failure takes place so an instantaneous failure of a coal pillar a part of a coal pillar or a, a several pillars of coal uh, which is known as bomb coal mine bombs uh, takes place in workings below the ground so these are some of the accidents which can uh, occur in your mining environment sometimes a premature collapse of any part of the workings may take place sometimes premature collapse of any part of the working may take place subsidence may take place and accident due to explosives while handling the explosives while blasting also because of the misfire accidents also do take place out of the explosives uh, sometimes a breakage of uh, sometimes a breakage or fracture of the rope chain head gear pulley axle or bearing thereof or other gear by which persons are lowered or raised so the people uh, they travel from the surface to the underground by the help of a cage a cage winding system is there a head gear structure is there from where the cage is lowering down the pit so sometimes uh, the cage also meets accident the rope through which the cage is suspended may rupture out the chain which is used for uh, uh, suspending the uh, suspending the cage also sometimes breaks the pulley head gear pulley or the axle or bearing parts may also get damaged uh, while lowering the cage down the pit or while raising raising the pit from the bottom of the pit to the top of the pit so uh, there also some type of accident take place in the underground uh, coal mines sometimes an overwinding of cages or other means of conveyance while men are being lowered or raised also accidents take place a breakage or fracture of an essential part of winding engine crankshaft coupling bearing gearing clutch drum or drum shaft or failure of emergency brake also may cause accident in the mines sometimes a bursting of any equipment sometimes the mining equipment burst out containing steam compressed air machines also sometimes they burst out because of the high pressure or other substances at high pressure may also burst out and there may be a breakage fracture or failure of any essential part of any mining machine or apparatus whereby the safety of the persons may be endangered and accidents do occur therefore the owner of the mine agent of the mine manager of the mine shall forthwith inform the regional inspector of the mines if any accident has taken place in your mines immediately you have to inform to the regional inspector of the mines in dgms direct regional mine safety uh, as per the coal mines regulation number 9 uh, if any accident has taken place in your mines immediately you have to uh, uh, report the matter to the regional inspector of the mines about the occurrence of the accident by telephoning message or by express telegram or by special messenger you can send a special messenger to convey the message that accident has taken place in your mines and uh, also uh, you have to fill up a form uh, number iva there is a form number iva is to be filled up and uh, 
uh, about the occurrence of the accident, you have to report it to the district magistrate, the collector in which uh, district your mine is situated. So you have to fill up a form IVA and submit it to the district collector in the area where your mine is situated. And the chief inspector of the mines and the regional inspector of the mines also will be informed uh, about the accident and this form IVA, uh, a copy of that will also be submitted to the chief inspector of the mines in DGMS Director General Mine Safety and regional inspector located in your mining area. And in the case of an accident which has taken place in your mines, you have to mention uh, 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 in the sub clause, one of these clause also to the coal mines labor commissioner. So if any accident has taken place in your mines, uh, the form IPA is to be filled up and the matter is to be reported to the chief inspector of the mines and regional inspector of the mines. And at the same time, uh, you have to submit a copy to the district magistrate collector of the area where your mine is situated. Not only that, a copy uh, is to be also submitted to the coal mines labor welfare commissioner located near to your mines. So as per the regulation number nine of coal mines regulation 1957, uh, notice is to be given uh, to the chief inspector of the mines, to the regional inspector of the mines, to the coal mines labor welfare commissioner, to the district magistrate of the area about the occurrence of the accident. Uh, the part B tells that when an accident uh, has taken place and somebody is dead, somebody has lost his life. Suppose in your minds, some accident has taken place and uh, uh, arising the, out of that, somebody is dead, some worker has lost his life or somebody is seriously injured uh, or uh, about a mine in connection with the generation, storage, transport, transformation, transmission, supply or use of electrical energy. Uh, because in the mines you are using the electrical source of energy for the uh, generation of electricity, for the storage of the electricity, for the transformation of the in, uh, electricity, for the transmission of electricity. So in, in that case, if some accident has taken place out of electrical energy and somebody is dead uh, or lost his life or somebody is seriously injured, then the owner agent of the mine, the manager of the mine shall also forthwith inform the electrical inspector of the mines. There is a electrical inspector which may be located near to your mining area, uh, nearby area. You have to inform uh, to the electrical inspector of the mines by telephonic communication or by express telegram or by special messenger that somebody is uh, dead, somebody is, has lost his life because of the electrical energy, because <coughs> somebody has <coughs> seriously injured because of the electrical energy that is to be reported to the electrical inspector of the mines by telephone, by express telegram or by sending a special message. Then second part of uh, the coal mines regulation 9-2 is if uh, death results, if somebody is dead from any injury reported as serious uh, under sub regulation 1 or if an injury other than the serious injury becomes serious, the owner of the mine, the agent of the mine, the manager of the mine shall within 24 hours of his being informed of the same, give notice thereof to the district magistrate, to the chief inspector of mines, to the regional inspector of the mines and the coal mines labor welfare uh, commissioner about the occurrence of the accident. Suppose um, accident has taken place, but nobody is dead, but uh, uh, they are very serious. So then uh, ser serious injury has taken place but subsequently it is found that they uh, further their health condition is deteriorated 
um, becomes very very serious in that case you have to as the manager of the mine as the owner of the mine as the agent of the mine within 24 hours of your occurrence of the accident you have to inform uh, to the district magistrate to the collector to the chief inspector of the mines to the regional inspector of the mines and the coal mines labor welfare commissioner in respect of every person killed if somebody is some one or two or three persons are dead in respect of every person killed or injured as a result of the accident the owner of the mine the agent of the mine the manager of the mine shall within 7 days of the occurrence of the accident send to the chief inspector of the mines particulars in form ibb there is a form which is called form ibb you have to fill it up if somebody some people are dead in your mines because of the accident you have to within 7 days you have to report uh, the form number ibb to the chief inspector of the mines by filling up all the reasons of accident number of people dead name of the person dead etc then uh, in coal mines regulation there is a regulation number 10 uh, regulation number 10 notice of a disease sometimes in the coal mining area uh, the miners diseases are uh, developed notice of disease if somebody has developed pneumoconiosis or silicosis or any type of disease uh, which is called your miners disease then in that case Uh, as per regulation number 10 you have to uh, give notice to the district magistrate to the coal mines labor welfare commission inspector of the mines to the regional inspector of the mines and the inspector of mines uh, medical section uh, uh, medical doctors uh, section that uh, somebody has developed a disease which is coming under the miners diseases so uh, this is the regulation number 10 uh, given in coal mines regulation 1957 where any person employed in a mine in an underground coal mine contracts any type of disease which is notified by the central government in the official gazette uh, as a miners disease the owner of the mine the agent of the mine or the managers of the mine shall within 3 days of it being informed within 3 days of being informed or the disease which has occurred he has to give notice there of in form ib uh, form b there is a form b uh, that is form is to be filled up about the name of the disease name of the person who has contracted the disease and that form is to be filled up and to be given to the district magistrate of the area where your mine is situated and that form b is to be given to the coal mines labor welfare commissioner that form d is to be given to the chief inspector of the mines at dgms director general mine safety that form b is to be given to the regional inspector of mines and the inspector of mines under medical section so uh, this is regulation number 10 notice of diseases notified diseases notified diseases are the diseases which are um, Uh, found in mining areas people suffer uh, those type of diseases uh, because of the coal mining activity those type of diseases are called your notified diseases if somebody has developed a notified disease then immediately within 3 days you have to report uh, fill up the form b and report to the district magistrate to the coal mines labor welfare commissioner to the chief inspector of the mines to the regional inspector of the mines and the inspectors of mine in charge of medical section then uh, there is regulations on 98 115 uh, mine workings regulation number 98 115 uh, speaks about mine workings these regulations coal mines regulations define the various parameters of the methods of work working in open cast mines and in underground coal mines under various mining conditions and uh, taken uh, 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 there are some 
the various methods of mining uh, carried out mines or in underground coal mines uh, because of the various geo mining conditions uh, and what action is taken for the safety of the mine workings and hence the persons safety of the people is dealt with in this section of coal mines regulation 1950 and then the coal dust generation that the 116-229 of the coal mines regulation 1957. So, what is regulation number 116? And uh, under the coal mines regulation 1957, uh, there is a regulation which is called 116. So, uh, what is defined in 116? in the regulation one there is a classification systems you know that the coal mines are classified uh, as gassy one mine gassy two mine gassy three mines depending on the degree of gassiness of the mine the coal seams have been categorized into three categories the seams releasing methane gas of 10 cubic meter are called degree three uh, gassy coal mines the coal seams releasing methane gas of 10 cubic meter are called degree 3 coal uh, degree 3 uh, gassy coal seams the mine workings are regulated in accordance with the highest degree of gassiness of the coal seams being worked under sec section 116a there are some general precautions against fire you have to take precaution against fire so that the fire will not take place in your mines what precautions are to be taken so that the coal mine fire will not taken uh, so that the fire will not take place in your mines so the, those are the general precautions against the coal mine fire is being uh, defined in 116 a and uh, uh, the regulation number 117 discusses about surface precautions against fire you have to take sufficient precaution at the surface so that uh, there will be no fire similarly uh, uh, the regulation number 118 tells about the underground precautions against fire you have to take sufficient precaution against fire uh, what precautions are to be taken in the underground so that fire will not take place which is uh, uh, explained in regulation number 118 uh, similarly there is another regulation is there regulation number 118a there are further
against spontaneous heating of coal, which is defined in about the precautions to be taken after a fire has broken out. Suppose fire has already taken place in your minds. So what is to be done? What precautions are to be taken is discussed in your regulation number 119. Similarly, there is another regulation is there 122 subsection section 123 of coal mines regulation tells about the precautions which is to be taken against dust. In the coal mines, a lot of coal dust is generated because of the drilling, because of the blasting, because of the mocking of the coal. So a lot of dust, coal dust is generated. So you know that the if the coal dust is inhaled by a person, then a pneumoconosis disease will be developed. Uh, the coal dust will go directly to the lungs and the lungs will be affected. So what precautions are to be taken against the dust? Coal mine. Number 124 defines about the precautions which is to be taken against eruption of gas. Uh, in the coal mines, methane gas comes out, carbon monoxide gas comes out, carbon dioxide gas is emitted. So, what precautions are to take care of eruption of various types of gases in the underground coal mines? And uh, uh, there is a section called 126. Uh, section number 126 defines about the dangers from our face water. You know that uh, in rainy season, uh, there is because of the heavy rain, the water may get into your underground mines through the sap, through the inclines. The water, surface water, may uh, go inside the mine, and the mine may be flooded with water. So in that case, uh, in uh, Regulation number 126 of coal mines regulation. Uh, there are some precautions you have to take to uh, guard against the dangers arising out of surface water. Similarly, the regulation 127, coal mines regulation section 127 defines uh, the precautions which are to be taken uh, uh, so that the dangers from underground inundation underground inundation flooding will not take place in your minds. So that uh, in the underground mines, the inundation will not take place. So this is defined in your uh, regulation number 127. Uh, then uh, these are the different sections are there. 116 to 129, various sections are there. Uh, under the coal mines regulation, uh, uh, which defines uh, the precautions which are to be taken to uh, guard against the dangers out of coal mine fire, guard the danger out of the coal mine dust, guard against the danger from the coal mining gases, methane gas, carbon monoxide gas, H2 gas different type of gases may be emitted in the mining environment. So what precautions you have to take in, uh, you have to take so that these gases will not harm the people who are working inside the mine. And you have, also, you have to take also precautions, surface precautions, underground precautions for coal mine fire. You have to take precautions for uh, inundation, flooding of the mine, water problem in the mines. So those precautions which are to be taken uh, is being defined in these regulations 116 to 127. So there is another regulation in the, in the coal mines regulation 1957, regulation number 132, 139 is there, uh, which discusses about the ventilation. What should the standard of ventilation? In underground coal mines, you know, the area has to be ventilated so that the people who are working inside the mine, they will get sufficient oxygen so that they can work comfortably inside the mine. So you know that uh, uh, without oxygen, people cannot work inside the mine. 
So that is why you have to supply fresh water. So how the fresh water will be supplied to the mines through the ventilation system, through the fans, either the forcing fans or the exhaust fans are to be used for the ventilation purpose. And you know that ventilations are of uh, uh, two types, ascensional ventilation and descensional ventilation is there. And there are different type of fans are there, forcing fans are there, uh, exhaust fans are there, uh, booster fans are there for the ventilation purpose. So <clears throat> regulation in the coal mines regulation 1957, uh, the section 130 to 149 discusses about the precautions to be taken uh, while ventilating the faces and while maintaining the standard of ventilation in the underground coal mines so that the work environment will be safe to work by the workers. So ventilation is a subject where you deal with different type of uh, gases. So including your oxygen, which is necessary for the uh, sustenance of the, the workers inside the mine. The people who are working inside the mine, so they should get sufficient oxygen. The oxygen level in the mines should be sufficient so that they will not feel uncomfortable inside the mine. Okay, so that is being carried out by the help of a ventilating fan. So there is an intake shaft is there, there is an uh, up, upcast shaft is there, intake or downcast shaft, intake or downcast shaft is there through which fresh air goes inside the mine, cool air goes inside the mine and the foul air uh, is coming out through the exhaust fan through the upcast shaft through the uh, upcast shaft and you have told it that there are two types of ventilation is there natural ventilation and air forcing ventilation mechanical ventilation so the mechanical ventilation is carried out by ventilating fans by using ventilation fans so the regulations uh, coal mines regulations, section 130 to 149, outlines the standard of ventilation, velocity of air current in the mine workings, what should the velocity of air current in the mine workings, what are the precautions to be taken against fire in the ventilation appliances, what are the precautions to be taken against gas during dewatering process and while reopening the mine, what are the precautions to be taken against inflammable gases like methane gas, uh, 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 methane gas, H2S gas, uh, gases, nitrous fumes generated out of blasting, how to deal with those type of gases are being uh, discussed or precautions are being um, uh, explained <coughs> which are to be followed in the underground coal mines. And uh, there are these sections also discuss or gives the guideline about the general precautions in gassy coal mines, in contrabands, uh, gassy coal mines, contrabands means uh, uh, somebody is carrying fire with him, contrabands with him. So th the person is not allowed to go to the mines with contrabands uh, for uh, uh, cigarettes, smoking or anything, no contraband will be allowed to be taken to the underground mines as per the regulation 130-249. The velocity of air current uh, is specified in different mining situation which is given in this table. Velocity of air current in different mining situations. Uh, if the
the ventilation system so as per the coal mines regulation as per the coal mines regulation under 3249 ventilation system is defined these regulations outline the standard of ventilation uh, uh, standard of uh, ventilation velocity of air current in the mine workings precautions against fire in ventilation appliances precautions against gas during dewatering and reopening of the mine precautions against inflammable gas and noxious gases general precautions in gassy coal mines contrabands um, banned in the coal mines the velocity of air current is specified in different mining situation is given in this table so this table gives you the velocity of air current in different mining situations for the degree of gassiness uh, for uh, uh, first degree of gassiness second degree of gassiness third degree of gassiness uh, uh, places where velocity of air is to be measured is immediate out by ventilation connection from the face and velocity of air should be 30 meter per minute and uh, if the coal mine is first uh, degree of gassiness or second degree of gassiness then uh, uh, the velocity of air is to be measured at 4.5 meter from any face whether working or discontinued on the intake side of the practice or partition the velocity of air current should be 30 meters per minute similarly at 7.5 meter out by of the discharge end of an air pipe uh, the velocity of air should be 15 meter per minute at the maximum span of a long wall phase the velocity of air is 60 meter per minute and if it is a gassy three third degree gassiness third degree degree of gassiness is third degree then uh, the velocity of air current is to be measured at 4.5 meter from any phase whether working or discontinued on the intake side of the practice of partition and the velocity of air current should be 45 meter per minute at 7.5 meter out by of the discharge end of the of an air pipe the velocity of air current should be 25 meter per minute at the maximum span of a long wall phase the velocity of air current should be 75 meter per minute and uh, as per regulation coal mines regulation 1957 sections 150 to 158 regulation 150 to 158 defines about the lighting standard safety lamps in the underground coal mine how to maintain lighting system in the underground coal mine and uh, where to use the safety lamps uh, this uh, section 150 to 158 outlines the lighting standards at the workplaces in the mines as given in the following table, whether it is open cast mine or underground mine. Lighting standard for open cast mines is given here. The location of the place like operational area of drag lines and sawbills. The minimum illumination level should be at 510 locks. Uh, a level in which illumination is to be provided is horizontal illumination, vertical illumination. Operational area of the drill machines, 10 uh, uh, locks should be there, vertical measurement. Operators cabin of shovel, drag line, drill machine, the illumination level should be 30 locks, horizontal measurement. Dumper hall roads, the illumination level should be 0 0.5 to 3 locks, uh, horizontal measurement. Overburden and coal dumps, the uh, minimum illumination level should be 3 lux and it should be measured horizontally. Roadways and pathways, footpaths from bench to bench, the illumination level should be 3 lux and it should be measured horizontally. And in the coal handling plants, workshops and service buildings, uh, the minimum illumination level should be as per Bureau of Indian Standards Specifications. So, uh, the lighting standard in the open cast mines should be in the pit bottom recommended minimum average illumination level uh, 
for satisfactory lighting condition is uh, measured in lumens per square foot. So pit bottom, it should be 1.5 to 3 lumens per square foot. Main junctions, it should be 1.25 lumens per square feet. For roadways, the minimum average illumination level should be 0.4 lumens per square feet. For haulage engine, for control gear, for haulage drums, the minimum average illumination level should be 1.5 lumens per square feet. So these are the things we wanted to convey today. Uh, so uh, what we have seen, what we have seen in this section, uh, your uh, regulation number 150 to 158, uh, we have discussed about the lighting standards in open cast mines and illumination standards, illumination standards, lighting standards, in the upon cast mines and uh, uh, previously in the sections 130 to 149 of coal mines regulation we have seen the ventilation system in the mines the velocity of air current and the places where the velocity of air current is to be measured depending upon the degree of gassiness of the mine and uh, uh, we have also discussed about the regulation 116 to 129 of coal mines regulation 1957. What are the precautions to be taken against danger from fire, dust, gas, and water in your mining area? And uh, we have also discussed about the mine workings, uh, regulations relating to coal mines, regulations relating to uh, the mine workings. So these coal mines regulations define the various parameters of the methods of working in open cast mines and in underground coal mines under various geo mining conditions. And the precautions uh, to be taken uh, for the safety of the mine workings and hence the person's safety is very important. For that purpose, these regulations are defined. And uh, we have also discussed about the coal mines regulation 1957 regulation section number 10 which defines the notified diseases if in your mines any disease has occurred because of the mining activities a miners disease notified disease has noticed in your mining area then that uh, notice is to be submitted to it is to be in form b to the collector of the area to the coal mines labor welfare Um, uh, loss of life in the mines for injured and of noxious gases may take place. Inflammable gas uh, may occur in your mining area. Eruption of water, inundation of Instantaneous failure of the uh, or coal mine, premature collapse of any part of the working, uh, any accident due to explosives, fracture, chain, headgear, pull.
so thank you thank you today about the coal mines regulations 1957 today we have discussed about the coal mines regulation 1957 so, uh, uh, so little uh, power cut so uh, you please take note of uh, the coal mines regulation 1957 with this i end this class today thank you thank you have a nice day thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you.